Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and ladies and gentlemen, if 2021 is the year of anything, it's the year of getting hacked. Because just this year so far, we've had so many cases of massive nation-state level hacks. Literally yesterday, a report came out from Amnesty International, Forbidden Stories, and a multitude, like 13 or 14 journalism agencies, and we're not talking about TikTok scandal, somebody sucked a cock journalism, we're talking about real put-your-life-on-the-line journalism. Then ended up coming out with a report where they basically stated for the record that uh, almost 50,000 phones were hacked and a lot of these people were journalists and whatnot. In fact, the countries that were specifically targeted in this story are Azerbaijan, Bahrain, Hungary, India, Kazakhstan, Mexico, Morocco, Rwanda, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates. Ladies and gentlemen, these are some pretty massive countries, and some of the targets, allegedly, were actually the wife of Jamal Khashoggi. So if you don't know who he was, this was a journalist from Saudi Arabia who was murdered very br murdered and dismembered very brutally. I can't, you know, sort of, I can't, you know, gussy up the facts here, okay? The, the reality is the guy was killed in 2018 while visiting the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Okay, so this guy, you know, he was a journalist and I guess he stepped on the wrong toes because now he ended up in pieces and he's gone for good, unfortunately. So a lot of these people have allegedly been hacked and there's one target that's being pinned on. NSO Group, Cyber Intelligence for Global Security and Stability. NSO creates technology that helps government agencies prevent and investigate terrorism and crime to save thousands of lives around the globe. Oh, that's, a, that's an inflammatory... Global threats. These criminals have access to advanced technology and are harder to monitor, track, and capture than ever before. The world's most dangerous offenders communicate using technology designed to shield their communications, while government intelligence and law enforcement agencies struggle to collect evidence and intelligence on their activities. So what they've basically stated isn't exactly a lie. There's been a lot of encryption-focused applications like Signal, for instance, like Telegram, uh, even, you know, most SMS applications like iMessage, and I think Google's, like, rich message service or rich, text ser rich chat services come with built-in encryptions. What encryption basically means is these things are so heavily, so, uh, I guess you could say, well, encrypted, okay? There's no better word for it. They're so heavily encrypted that trying to gain access to a lot of devices that we have, like our iPhones and our Android devices, our cell phones, basically, even our computers, even if the authorities confiscate these devices, it's very difficult if any, if anything at all, to open these devices up and look what's within them because of the heavy encryption built into them for our privacy. Now, I'm one of those people that advocates privacy, and I understand wholeheartedly it's getting way harder to track the bad guys because of the same technology that protects our privacy. But that's a double-edged sword, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of the day, if you want privacy, this is the world you have to live in. Giving any government or any third party access into your system just for the sake of protecting us is not okay okay that's like some patriot act shit that's like some minority report shit you remember that movie with tom cruise nobody wants that world that's a fucked up dystopian world so anyways let's get down to this entire story so amnesty international has a giant cyber lab that basically sat down and assessed basically a bunch of journalist cell phones all right so basically they looked at this thing called pegasus a piece of malware that was sold by nso group nso group claims that it's pegasus spyware is only only used to investigate terrorism and crime, okay? Uh, noble cause, of course, uh, something that could be used to break into cell phones or look through emails. I, I'm not going to be a naive Andy, all right? It could probably use for much more nefarious reasons, maybe something like state surveillance. The forensic methodology reports shows that neither of these statements are true. That's what uh, Amnesty International is saying. This report accompanies the release of the Pegasus Project, a collaborative investigation that involves more than 80 journalists from 17 media organizations in 10 countries coordinated by Forbidden Stories with technical support of Amnesty International Security Lab. So here they basically looked into the system and they started to basically focus on a lot of its network injection attacks. So for instance, they would actually look through all these devices and even all the way as back as 2019, they found that a device was communicating to, say, Yahoo France, right? And then immediately under it, it was communicating with this weird URL, right? This weird URL that you would click onto and gain malware. 
Yeah, here they're saying Amnesty also reported that its forensic researchers had determined that NSO Group's flagship Pegasus spyware was installed onto the phone of post-journalist Kamal Jamal Khashoggi's fiance Hati Sengiz, just four days after he was killed in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul in 2018. The company had previously been implicated in other spying on Khashoggi. Now again, these are just allegations, all right, made by these guys. So I just want to say, for the record, for fair and balanced shit, let's go look at what NSO Group is saying before I get into the idea of how this hack actually played out. So here they've got, for following the publication of the recent article by Forbidden Stories, we wanted to directly address the false accusations and misleading allegations presented there. Okay, so let's read their side of the story, because a story has two sides. The report by Forbidden Stories is full of wrong assumptions and uncorroborated theories that raise serious doubts about the reliability and interests of the sources. It seems like the unidentified sources have supplied information that has no factual basis and are and are far from reality. You know, for information that's not exact, I mean, they've really dug in hardcore. These are multiple, like if you can look at a 9.3, 9.2, they've investigated a fair amount. I'm not gonna say for the record that I'm believing any side, but if it's one thing right off the bat, from what I've read, Amnesty International Security Lab doesn't look like they were fucking around whatsoever. So again, going back, after checking their claims, we firmly deny the false allegations made in their report. There's, I mean, what do you expect them to say? Do you want them to say, you got us, you got us? Like, come on now. Their sources have supplied them with information which has no factual basis, as evident by the lack of supporting documentation for many of their claims. In fact, these allegations are so outrageous and far from reality that NSO is considering a defamation lawsuit. I, I actually, I, I wonder, I wonder if that's even going to go through. I mean, that's a really hard case to prove. And it looks like, it looks like Amnesty, at least right off the bat, has all the receipts to, to at least fight this case if it ever went to trial. So as NSO previously stated, our technology was not associated in any way with the heinous murder of Jamal Khashoggi. We can confirm that our technology was not used to listen, monitor, track, or collect information regarding him or his family members mentioned in the inquiry. We previously investigated this claim, which again is being made without validation. I mean, you don't want your name attached to something as fucked up as that, so I totally understand this paragraph. We would like to emphasize that NSO sells this technology solely to law enforcement and intelligence agencies of vetted governments for the sole purpose of saving lives through preventing crime and terror acts. NSO does not operate the system and has no visibility to the data. Now to understand, all right, this is a fine declaration that they've made. Now their software can be used for state surveillance, okay? But if it's there intended purely to stop criminal activities and terrorism, then yes, okay? Obviously it's it's one of these magical golden scenarios, but the world isn't black and white. And personally, me personally, I have a hard time believing if this software is just used to stop bad people around the world. I'm also, I mean, I, I would be naive to think that that's the only thing this amazing cyber arm soft, cyber warfare software software was used for. Now to understand, NSO Group is in the world of cybersecurity, but mostly cyber arms, okay? So if you don't know what cyber arms is, it's an entire industry that's based around finding zero days, software exploitation, and basically selling legal spyware to countries and governments and bodies around the world so they can break in to products that, uh, you know, th this is basically a black hat organization. In a way, if you had to look at it, these are people selling spyware. I think the entire terminology of white hat, black hat is sort of absolutely washed away. These are people selling what is legal spyware, okay, to government agencies around the world. For better or for worse, that's what the cyber arms industry is. Now, in this case, the organization at Amnesty Tech, all right, their labs ended up posting an investigation based around all of this okay so they basically they basically just went out and they gave out all the receipts for you to go look into so they have the entire investigations and they've looked into numerous areas as far as three years ago right now of course this is 2021 nso so see how they began it with again and now they're here again so nso is back into the into the into the into the spotlight you click on their recent investigation and here they'll tell you this is all their indicators so domains v2 domains v3 v4 for each version of the Pegasus malware, uh, validation domains, emails, text, files, text, Pegasus sticks to, and then processes.txt. So if we open up processes.txt, these are all the processes that sort of triggered to be a little bit suspicious 
for the agency. So let's say you click on any of their things. We'll go to like their V4 domains. And let's say you go all the way down to something and you're like butterdockchange.com, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay now now ladies and gentlemen how this works is basically the way that this malware infects you is nothing magical i'm going to walk you through how the infection starts so the way that they hacked all of these iphones and android devices or whatever device that belonged to these journalists or government agents was uh basically they sent a spear a sphere phishing email or a text message now to understand what a sphere phishing message or an email is basically it's a message that's disguised through social engineering to be sent to somebody for them to click a link that'll take them somewhere malicious that will end up installing malware onto their devices. I think the best example I can kind of give you is you probably already have one of these in your email, junk folder, or even a text message received to you in the last week, today, whenever. So, okay, here's a timeline of an actual sphere phishing attack, okay? So right off the bat, you can actually see that I've received a message from Apple ID. Now, Apple ID sends me this email and it says, verify your account information. Now, it could have said that, hey, your account has been compromised click here to review security first red flag is this is not the email account that i've ever added to my actual apple id most apple id accounts will have an icloud account you know right from apple where they'll be sending all of these emails to anyways to your phone unless you have a secondary email set up for security reasons don't expect this this is a red flag the other thing and this is what people don't notice is you ever see how these images at the bottom aren't loading up a lot of these fear phishing attempts will have broken uh asset tree that's not a that's not always a given but usually shitty sphere phishing attempts do that now the actual email looks pretty fine they've got all the letterheads and the and the copyright dates but the email is the giveaway this is an email that belongs from a sphere phishing email address this is not at apple.com unless it says apple.com or apple support or any verified domain from apple it is a blatant fear spear phishing attempt now some of these guys get real crafty and they try to obfuscate that email by sort of messaging to like a bunch of other addresses but in general if it's not from at apple.com or at apple whatever their support emails are do not go any further they have a verify your account link you click that and you'll probably be inviting malware to your device so at this point this is how a sphere phishing attempt works and this is these are the red flags to absolutely watch out for now even if you're very careful the other ways that you can attack somebody is by using a wi-fi access point and the way that you're going to do that is imagine for a second you're at a Starbucks. I'm using Starbucks as an example. Starbucks has free Wi-Fi. If I went to a Starbucks and I hosted a Wi-Fi network that just said Starbucks free Wi-Fi, not hard to do that. Now on that network, you would be in the same Starbucks. You would open up your phone. You would look through your Wi-Fi points. And you'd be like, oh, the, the free Starbucks Wi-Fi system. You click on that without thinking. And what happens is now you've connected to my fake Wi-Fi hotspot that I'm going to use to hack you. So what I've done is when you've connected is I've sent you a login page. Any free Wi-Fi network, you know what I'm talking about. You click on their Wi-Fi pages and they'll give you an access, right? They'll be like, hey, put your email, click here, and we'll let you connect to the internet. See, what I'll do is I'll spoof that exact same page from Starbucks, not difficult to do. Uh, I will tell you to put your email in, and as soon as you click connect or proceed or whatever on that page, I will then redirect you to where the malware is going to then deliver its payload. And that's how you can also get infected. So you got to be careful on every front. That's just how many of you didn't know that that could happen. Okay. I'm sure a lot of you knew that, but for some of you who had no idea, now you know. And then there's always a tried and true way of them of an agent grabbing a phone, doing it the old fashioned way. Okay. So there's many ways that this Pegasus malware could be sent. Once it was sent, this malware obtained basically root privileges on iOS devices or Android. What root privileges basically means is they had the lowest level access. And by lowest level, they could start looking into your SMS history, your photos, whatever files were on your device, and start exfiltrating them back to another server. That's the allegation. That's how this allegedly played out. Now to show you guys, if you look through this entire list, right, like all, the, all these investigation domains, one of the things you can also do just for shits and gigs is we'll take that butter doc change and we'll go through a who is search and butter doc change ends up telling me that this was a server registered in 2020 actually created in 2019 so it's not it's not that old um registrar expiration date was 2021 it was by Namecheap, and here it apparently was registered in Reykjavik 
Now, of course, there's a lot of things basically kept for privacy purposes, which is what you expect from a, uh, you know, who is domain that's protected. So again, beyond that, wasn't really surprised, you know, definitely behind some levels of protection. But I'm going to show you a cool website called browserling.com that you can go to, which will allow you to basically create a quick little dirty virtual machine to open up suspicious links. Let's say you wanted to check a suspicious link. You basically go to browserling, which is meant for browser testing. But if you go over here and paste butterdog change, let me get rid of the extra HTTP, uh, you can pick which operating system you want. So if you want Android or you want Windows 8.1, 10, 7, it doesn't matter for me. You can pick your browser and you can pick the version. Anyways, test it now just for the sake of it. It'll put you in a queue. And once you open it up, you'll notice that, hey, I can kind of browse the internet underneath this virtual machine. So you can open up suspicious links and nothing should be able to infect you through browser link. And here you can see that name cheap showed up again and butter dog changed. So whatever this site was, it's all fucking gone. Okay. It's all removed at this point. Um, and I'm sure a lot of these actual domains from this link are probably all gone. Okay. I'm sure you can't find familyabroad.net anymore. Again, I'm going to remind you, do not click on anything from here. Okay. Do not click any link. Do not put it in your browser and actually go to it raw in your own system. This is begging to get fucked in the ass. So don't do it. Now that concludes the Pegasus malware attack. Something that I wanted to look into because it's just emerging and it's one of the other biggest hacks that has ever actually occurred. Okay. Allegedly. Okay. I'm not going to say that NSO group is doing anything malicious. Again, these are just what, what the story is presented right now. Okay. This is just what I'm able to assess. And this is what I'm able to teach you on how it allegedly occurred. Okay. So I want to see, you know, in the next couple of weeks, information from NSO coming out because it seems like Amnesty International and, and, and all these organizations, which are big organizations, by the way, have really put their balls on the line and they're standing by their actual reporting. So it's interesting to see how this is going to play out. But this is the alleged uh, Pegasus project, if you will. One of the other biggest hacks of 2021. I can only imagine what happens next, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all eyes are on an Israeli cybersecurity company and it's time to see uh, just where the story leads. So am I going to be looking forward to this? Am I going to be looking into more of this? Absolutely. But for now, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.